Hi, my name's Dave from Megapoints Controllers and on this video we're going to talk about mimic panel enclosures or boxes. If you've seen us at an exhibition you may have seen this panel. It's a demonstration panel. It was copied off a customer's layout and it's fully functional uh, but it's just a little bit unwieldy. So what I want to do is replace this with this guy which is a little bit smaller. This is also slightly based off a customer's layout uh, but I've modified it and I've added a few more things to it so what I thought we'd do on this particular panel is I'll demonstrate how to assemble the enclosure and I'll use this panel as an example for wiring so at some point you'll get to see me wire it up and test it. Um, this panel will have regular style buttons so that you can set a route manually. It will also have a route processor here so we can program and recall selected routes. And uh, it also has LEDs for feedback display. So it'll be having a feedback module as well to indicate track occupancy. And I think to dovetail this video into a new series on hacking with the Arduino, um, I'm going to write some code for an Arduino to effectively build a simulator so that it will look like trains are actually traveling around the tracks. And I thought that would be a useful example to share with everybody and uh, get you going on how to use the Megapoints controllers uh, in conjunction with an Arduino and uh, have a bit of fun as well. Now the instructions on the website for uh, building an enclosure uh, differ slightly from a larger panel like this which is made from 4mm plywood to a smaller panel like this which is made of uh, 3mm, it's actually 2.8mm this and the new one will be um, exactly 3mm, it's a slightly different wood, a bit stronger, firmer than this so I think it'll be suitable for a, a medium sized panel. But what I'm going to do on this video is first we're going to cut and make the enclosure. I'm going to lay it all out and I'm going to show you which bits go where because the principle is the same irrespective of size. Um, some panels have just two holes, one on each side, the smaller ones, to lock the top to the bottom. And other panels like this longer one have them on the sides and they also have screws one, two. This has three on the bottom and three on the top as well. So there's a total of uh, eight screws holding this together. So uh, follow along and let's, uh, let's see how far we get. So here's the base being cut. The most important thing it's done I think is to, uh, to put the logo on for now. But the problem with panels that are over 550 mil is that they consume a lot of sheets of wood. In this case it's going to take three sheets of wood to make this enclosure whereas something like an A4 I can do in a single sheet. Okay let's see what we've got. Nice clean cut and here's the first piece. With this panel it's um, it's the first time I've ever cut it, so I designed it last week, um, but I haven't yet uh, tested it. So you'll be uh, you'll be watching uh, watching me hope it works. What could possibly go wrong? So we'll load a second sheet of wood and cut the second part. good. And we're good to go. So this sheet's going to cut one of the bezels and some of the side supporting pieces for the enclosure. 
The way the software works is it cuts from the inside out. So we're actually using waste material here from the inside of the bezel. And that's one of the inner supports that would allow you to lock the top half of the enclosure to the bottom. So that's sheet number two done. Nice clean cut again. And this sheet contains the shorter sides, the bezel, and half of the longer sides. Clean up the bed. I'll just make sure I haven't left anything lying on. There's a few little bits. Good. And the final sheet, sheet number three. But the suction grab. So we'll test. Looks like it's going to fit. And we're off. I'll move the camera back now and you can uh, see what's going on. Okay, let's move everything to the table and see what we have. When you receive an enclosure in the post, it'll be packed something like this in a bag. So we can separate the parts and then we'll go over and identify them in a minute. Inside you'll find the two bezels. There's the first. This is a packing piece. So use it for something else, but it's of no use to the, to the enclosure itself uh, because it'll hold these, let's take the rest off. Bezel number two, packing piece. Then we've got the side mounts, the side risers, and the top side risers. This is, uh, on this particular uh, panel, it's going to have a recessed port because I want um, the switch to not get accidentally turned on and off when it's going to exhibitions but normally there's no on off switch on a panel because it's powered up when you uh, power your layout up. I'll relocate the camera and see if we can have a good look at it um, whilst I'm working on it. Okay let's go over what's in the box. So you should have two bezels, these won't be needed just yet, you should have two or four inner lips. And this very much depends on the size of the enclosure. The A4 ones have a pair 
and this little lip goes on the inside and holds a captive nut so the top can lock to the bottom. We'll come back for that later and this. And if you look at the other vertical risers on the side, there are two types. There's one type with slots or tabs cut in it and one without. So you should have two with tabs and two without for the sides and two without and two with tabs for the long, long parts as well. Now, the way I make the box is I start from the base. So the sides with tabs, I don't need yet. So I'll remove them. So that leaves me five pieces to start the enclosure. I genuinely have not tested this yet. It's the first of a new design. When you look at the wood, you'll see one side is cleaner. It might have a slight burning on it. The other side is what I call the dirty side. It's got all the marks where the uh, laser splashes back off the, um, the uh, frame that holds it. That's the side that you want to put towards the inside so that you end up with a cleaner side on the outside. This is the base. The logo goes to the outside. So first of all, we'll offer up the, the side piece. The logo should be face down. Pop it into the tabs. If it's a bit tight, um, chew it off a little bit with a, um, a hacksaw or uh, I use a Stanley knife. Let's try it with the back piece. That's okay. The same with the side pieces, dirty side upwards in this case because we're going to fold them up. Dirty side up. And that is basically, that forms the bottom the bottom of the enclosure. So we've got the base with the logo upside down, the front and back, if they have logos, they should be face down, and the sides, and you want the dirty pieces sticking up. Let's test now how it goes together when we pull the sides up, and we slot the sides together, that's a good fit. That's a good fit. And that's a good fit. Oops, it was until I knocked it over. There we go, let's get that back in. Good fit there. Okay. Okay, I'm happy that goes together. So now we'll just glue it. What I use is a decent quality white glue or PVA. push it together, let's find my PVA. So I'll just run a bead along this joint. I'm putting the glue so that it's half on each tab and it'll become obvious in a minute when I butt them together as to why. It's a bit awkward making this on camera. Let's see if I can get to that side. Yeah, there we go. Don't forget to do the little tabs here and here and this guy here and here. Let's come round and get some more PVA on this. Apologies if my hand's in the way. on here, here, basically I'm putting glue on all the sticky out tabs.
it'll go down this side On the tabs on the side, one, two, tabs on the side there, one, two, tabs on the side there, one, two, and the last side. Okay, so the next question is how do we hold it together? If you've got elastic bands, use them. You could use uh, the roof rack rubber bands. There are many ways to do it. I use these webbed bands. They're absolutely brilliant, they were a fiver. But then again, I make a lot of enclosures. <laughs> Pull this out to the approximate size, put these sides up, one, two, three, the thumb with plywood is, it tends to bend or warp and there's nothing you can do about it, all I can do is ensure it's absolutely flat when I cut it, so you get a good fitting side. Oh, and in you go. We know it fits, we've tried it. There we go, so I'll hold it loose. And I'll take this band, this web, and pull it to length. Let's see how we're doing. See if I can get this on without knocking it. Put a bit on each corner. Nope, not big enough yet. Let's make it larger. You could use a belt at a pinch, I suppose. That would work. But this is just a little bit more flexible for me. Let's tighten it. And then I can get some tension. Doesn't need a lot. Make sure everything's down properly. Now if you look here, it's not, it's formed, it's formed a good seal at the corners, but because this is a larger panel, there's a little bit of bowing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it over. Now I can see the base is on, that's good, and where the gap is here. And what I'll do there is I'll use some um, some clamps. The bigger ones tend to be more effort to do. Will that fit? Of course it won't. So, the clamp here, and another one somewhere in the middle, like so. happy with that. I don't think this is critical, um, but get it right, do it once I suppose. Uh, 
Now the only other thing I need to do is just add a little bit of weight to the edges to keep it all snug. And I think we'll leave that for half an hour or so and uh, see what we end up with.